In this video, we are going to explain the daily inspection process for the Backside 3D Green Dental CT Scan Machine from Batek. The first thing we need to do is to open um, our imaging uh, software, which is ECDent4. Uh, we will look for the um, patient chart that we um, use for our daily tests, open uh, the program. And at this point, make sure that your um, settings to take x-rays are the ones that are shown on the screen. You need to make sure that you select the biggest field of view. Um, you have to select uh, low dose mode for the Paxi 3D Green, a standard, okay, voxel size standard, and no metal artifact reduction um, applied. Okay, so. Um, with those settings um, selected, uh, you just hit the confirm button as we just did. Uh, the machine will start moving as we will see. Also notice that we have selected occlusal for the vertical position and horizontal uh, position is uh, center in this case. Okay. Uh, after a few seconds, we will see the machine uh, moving, and um, that is when we will start positioning our inspection kit uh, on the chin rest, as you will see uh, on the screen. Okay, so when you see the uh, ready uh, button blinking, you know, uh, you know um, that that's when we usually. Um, position the patient. In this case, we're going to just uh, remove all the uh, accessories from the chin rest because there is no patient to, to position in this case. We're going to position uh, the inspection kit instead. So just take out everything that can be removed, okay? Um, temple supports, um, the bite stick, okay? The chin rest. And then uh, you will start placing uh, first uh, the jig which is this uh, this piece okay this disc all right so uh, this jig will be used as the base or support for all the other items that come as part of the um, inspection kit okay um, after we place uh, the jig on the chin rest okay um, we will need to double check a couple of things in here. First, the pos position of the jig uh, with respect to the laser beam. Can you see the laser beam right there on the screen? Okay, so um, I usually um, have a card with me, something that helps me, you know, determine the exact position of the laser. Okay, uh, that laser beam needs to be aligned with the middle groove of this jig okay this jig has uh, uh, different groups on its surface okay just make sure that the laser beam is aligned with the um, center group okay and uh, how do you adjust it well you have these two uh, plastic screws okay um, that will allow you to slide that jig all right once you find the right position then just tighten those screws up and that will hold it in place okay we can double check now all right after we just uh, tighten those screws we can check again with the card and you will see that uh, that laser is uh, right on top of the um, middle group okay so that's number one. Next, you will have to place this uh, level phantom. You see the level there? And it has a number, number one. The jig has a number zero, the level has a number one. Okay, so you put um, the level on top of the jig. All right, and uh, with the plastic uh, screws at the bottom of the jig, you can adjust the level, okay? And you can actually determine if uh, your whole kit is leveled properly using the bubble 
uh, that is um, part of the level tool. You see the bubble right there? Okay, if the bubble is uh, in the center of that um, tool of the API, okay, then uh, it means that the uh, whole kit is properly leveled. Okay, so um, after you place uh, the jig and the level, you have this uh, phantom which is for city number. Okay, it has a number two. Okay, it's um, identified with number two in your kit. Okay, and it comes with several materials to evaluate. Okay, it has metal, it has acrylic, it has Teflon, it has water in a deposit. We don't need the metal, so we just uh, remove the piece. Okay, from the phantom. Okay, and then we just um, we will just evaluate um, Teflon, air, and water. Okay, uh, we don't evaluate the acrylic. Okay, yes, Teflon, water, and air. Okay, and uh, then we place the phantom for key number on top of the other two pieces. Okay, um, now what we need to do is to align a horizontal laser beam. Okay, that is visible from um, the side of the machine. Okay, uh, once again I will use a card to um, to see it better. Okay, from this angle. And um, that laser beam needs to cross the middle section of the top phantom, in this case the city number phantom. Okay? If you don't get to see the horizontal laser beam crossing the middle section of the top phantom, then there is a trick. Um, you can always uh, raise a little bit the the height of the uh, kit by putting one more phantom um, in the whole um, assembly. Uh, I will show you how to do it. We are going to use this uh, other phantom, okay, that comes in the kit, okay, that's for uniformity actually, but in this case we are going to use it just for the purpose of um, increasing the height of um, this uh, whole assembly that I'm uh, putting together okay so I put that one and then on top I put the city number phantom right and now you see that uh, the whole thing is um, um, higher than before okay and now the uh, horizontal laser beam actually crosses the top phantom uh, you will see it like that probably at an angle yeah but Okay, and uh, after you have placed those um, two laser beams, okay, uh, you can come back to the computer, okay, and uh, click the uh, blinking ready button, okay, and the machine will start moving to the zero position, preparing. Uh, the the unit to take an X-ray of that um, inscription kit. Okay, so uh, just remember uh, those two laser beams need to be aligned. The first one needs to be aligned needs to be aligned with the middle group on top of the phantom, and the horizontal laser beam needs to be aligned as if it was cutting in two halves um, that top phantom crossing the middle section actually of the disc okay and this is for a reason you will see it when we open the image okay so um, at this point I'm just checking uh, my whole assembly just to uh, make sure that I don't forget anything and then uh, when I come back to the computer I will just click on the ready button okay like this perfect and um, as I said the machine will start moving you know to the zero position the initial position and then uh, the system will let me know that now it is ready for me to take an x-ray like that okay 
So I just uh, step out right of the part of the beam. I'm pushing my uh, exposure switch now so I can take an extra. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, I just took the X-ray. I just released the uh, special switch, and of course the um, machine is going back to the initial position. Okay, it's parking itself. Okay. Right there. Okay. So um, this is the the first um, of two. CT scans that we need to take daily, okay, for inspection. All right, so this is uh, the screen showing the the acquisition process actually, okay, while we were pressing the um, exposure switch. All right, so you can see on the screen um, that we are taking the image, okay. And after the reconstruction process is completed in the computer, um, the system will generate the DICOM files, okay? And then we will be able to um, see the CT scan that we just took. In the patient chart that we selected initially to be used for this test. Okay, I called my um, my patient chart daily tests. That way, I can just uh, uh, use that one and remember uh, its name more easily. Okay, and use it uh, every single day. You know, for all these uh, tests, so I I can just uh, keep all my daily tests in one single patient chart. You know, for uh, for uh, uh, recording purposes. Okay, right there. So I have uh, my CT scan. I'm gonna open it right now. And Incident 4 is going to call this other program called Easy 3D Plus, which is the CT scan viewer. And it's actually in this program, Easy 3D Plus, where we are going to perform our evaluation. We need to determine the CT number in Hounsfield units of those materials that um, I showed you before air, water and teflon okay so um, just to let you know um, in the meantime as the uh, image is uh, being opened um, the nominal values for uh, teflon is uh, 1000 Hounsfield units for water uh, 0 Hounsfield units and for air minus 1000 constant units okay and uh, you can see the images right there on the lower left uh, quadrant of the screen i just maximized uh, the view so that you can see it better okay and that is uh, air you can see the air there that is um, um, i will show you now that i'm creating my regions of interest here okay this one here is uh, the first one I'm drawing is for Teflon, you see. Um, okay, and the label shows uh, the average Hounsfield unit for that region I just draw. I'm going to draw another region here. This is for water. Okay. And once again, the label shows the average um, value for the Hounsfield units. And I'm going to create one more for air. Okay, the tolerance uh, that uh, has been given to us by the manufacturer is 200 Hounsfield units. Okay, above or below 
those numbers that I gave you. Okay. So um, just try to uh, draw your regions of interest so that they are about uh, 20 millimeters square. All right. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, just um, something about that size um, will keep not only consistency but also accuracy. Okay, when uh, performing these readings. Okay, so just try to make those three regions of interest to just uh, do about the same size, 20 millimeters square. Okay, you can read the the area actually on those labels as well. Okay, and um, that's pretty much it for the city number evaluation. Just make sure that your um, average values for the three materials are, as I said, 1,000 Hounsfield units plus minus 200 for Teflon, zero Hounsfield units plus minus 200 for water, and minus 1,000 Hounsfield units plus minus 200 for air. Okay, those are the tolerance uh, ranges. Then take a screenshot. You saw that tool up there. There is a camera tool. Okay, you can just take a screenshot and then the image will be saved automatically in incident 4, like that. Okay, that will help you keep a record, as I said before, you know, in one single place of all your daily tests. Okay, after you have taken your screenshot, then you don't need to uh, keep this program open. Just close it. Okay, say not to save. Okay. And then uh, we can proceed with the next uh, step of the uh, inspection process, which is um, uniformity test. Okay, this one was city number test. The next one is going to be uniformity test, and we're going to use for that the other phantom. So we open once again the capture program. Okay, and uh, we select our values as I mentioned uh, to you before. Okay, uh, just use low dose mode again. Okay, for the packs that you Low dose mode, um, a standard voxel size, no metal artifact reduction applied. Okay, um, the vertical position needs to be occlusal, the horizontal position um, center. Okay, and always use the biggest field of view available in your uh, x ray machine. Okay, to perform these tests. Okay. So after you just double check that all those settings um, are correct, as I just uh, explained to you, then confirm the settings on the screen by clicking the confirm button. Okay, and then the ready button will start blinking, which means that now it's time for you to go to the machine and place the phantom. Okay, so if we go to the machine now, uh, remember we had the uh, city number phantom on top, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case what we need to uh, put on top of the whole assembly is uh, the uniformity phantom instead. Okay, so we will just uh, in this case switch positions. Remember we just placed the uniformity phantom below just to raise the height a bit. So I will just uh, remove the top phantom for city number, remove the uniformity phantom, that's the uniformity phantom, okay, it just has a, a cross, okay, and then just put it on top, and then place everything again on the genus like that, okay, very simple, okay, my uh, laser, okay, that crossed the middle groove shouldn't uh, move okay it should still be in the same place but you can double check it like that you see it's still in place right okay perfect so still in place what I need to check now is the hor uh, the horizontal laser beam the one that crosses the um, top fan can you see okay so I need to um, raise the chin rest a bit okay and now you can see it better okay much better than the first time I think Okay, you can see right crossing the middle section of the top phantom. Okay, so we've got uh, our two laser beams already positioned. Okay, and then uh, we can go back to our computer to um, uh, continue with the process. Okay.
so on the in the computer I just uh, click the ready button because I know for sure that my phantom is well positioned you know this is pretty much the same process that you follow with a patient right when you have the patient already positioned you know and everything is uh, correct then you go back to the computer and you click the ready button. Well, the same for the phantom. After you have positioned the phantom correctly and aligned those um, laser beams correctly, then you go back to the uh, computer and uh, using the um, the controls on the screen, just accept you know um, that prompt that uh, the machine is ready uh, for exposure. So we just click the ready button. And the machine will move to the um, zero position, to the initial position, okay? And it's preparing itself uh, to take an X-ray. Okay, so uh, at that point, we are ready to take the X-ray. Okay, and we will uh, push the exposure, the exposure switch now. Okay, to take the X-ray. Okay. We release the switch now, and the machine will go back. Okay, to park itself. Um, at the initial position there. okay so those are the two um, CT scans that we need to take okay for inspection purposes and how to evaluate this second CT scan okay very simple um, well first we will need to uh, wait for the image to be reconstructed on the screen and then saved into our um, patient chart that we created in incident 4 okay so um, right now um, the image is being reconstructed on the screen as you can see okay it's going to create also um, the DICOM files okay Okay, and after the image has been reconstructed, we just click the save button, okay, so that the image can be transferred to the patient chart, okay. Alright, so we have the image saved already, we double click the thumbnail on top to open the, the image. And um, the tool we are going to use is the same, uh, the region of interest tool. But in this case, we are going to make sure that the regions of interest that we create are 25 mill millimeters away from the center of the image. Let me show you. Okay, we will use uh, once again um, this pane here. Okay, we will maximize it uh, later for you to see. 
but we need to make sure that um, uh, we measure 25 millimeters okay from the center of the fan so like that we can use this tool okay it looks like a ruler okay it's a, it's a tool that allows us to measure okay distances in the program okay and as I said we need to calculate about 25 millimeters away from the center in um in four directions okay um let's say north south east and west okay like that okay Okay, so one more, um, one more distance to measure here, about 25 millimeters. Okay, and after we have um, our four distances calculated, okay, in all four directions. Now, what we will do is to create uh, four regions of interest at the end of those four distances that we drew, okay and one fifth region of interest right at the center of the phantom okay so it will be five in total five uh, regions of interest okay and uh, the purpose of this evaluation is to determine the difference between the region of interest with the lowest average value and the region of interest with the uh, highest um, average value if such difference is less than 400 Hounsfield units that means that our uniformity test um, has passed the inspection okay our results are, are good okay uh, it's, it's very simple okay um, just uh, draw those regions of interest get the lowest and the highest average value and um, if the difference is less than 400 units between those two then we are fine and after you finish drawing those uh, regions of interest of yours uh, just don't forget to uh, save your screenshot okay for your own records and uh, that's it that uh, finishes the daily inspection process